Well, guys, I think it's past being laughable now. Watching the media dance around the elephants in the room, it's actually like a bad attempt at stand-up comedy or something like that. Because while people might not be saying it as much, they're certainly thinking it more often these days, I would say. I mean, the media must also be thinking about this, but for the most part are completely ignoring it because they don't report the news, they report the agenda and nothing more. You think people will buy this? Why not? This is the BTN. Our job is to report the news, not fabricate it. That's the government's job. Now, this article here is no different because while they are right to discount bat flu as the reason for more excess deaths, they avoid talking about the woolly mammoth in the room to blame literally anything else they can. Of course, them blaming things like lockdowns, lack of treatment and other factors is not wrong because many deaths have been caused by them. We all said this in 2020 when the media pushed lockdowns like they was being paid for it because oh yeah, they was being paid for it with taxpayer money, wasn't they? We all know the damage done implementing lockdown policies to save the health service that we all fund to save us. This is nothing new. But as per usual, the media completely miss out the possibility that new safe and effective medical treatments played some part in this, even if it turned out that they didn't. They call for an investigation but ignore possible causes outright, making any investigation completely worthless, I would say. I mean, not once do they mention the fact that millions of people have taken a medical treatment that is so new we still don't even have two years safety data on it more than 12 months after it was given en masse to the public. As you know, the safe and effective treatment was only created in what, mid to late 2020 they claim, with the rollout not starting until like 2021. So, from creation to now has not even been two years for many who took it to know what the medium and long term effects of it are actually gonna be. Oh yeah, 5 and 10 year data, you can forget about that because they didn't wait for it. Instead they decided the general population can tell them that in 5 or 10 years time. It's pretty demented I know, but that's the world we live in these days. Now the Telegraph article talking about the rise in excess deaths makes no mention of side effects and instead blames the uptick in strokes and heart attacks on bat flu. This despite there not being a rise in these deaths during 2020 when the pandemic started. So while I don't know what's causing these excess deaths and likely never will, the fact the media completely discount Pfizer's latest concoction as an option raises the suspicions or motive I've gotta say. I mean even if what they say about it being safe and effective is true, adverse side effects effects would still be a thing as they literally are with all medicine, so admitting it could have played a role would be normal for any new drug would it not? Especially one that was given to many millions as they claim it was. The fact it was apparently given out on such a scale would mean the side effects are guaranteed, which then makes it look fishy when the media skirt around that elephant in the room there. Now like I said, I don't know what caused the uptick in deaths, but the literal dance the media do around even the possibility of it being the poke certainly looks suspicious to me. But I guess the media have now told us through a mission that it can't be the 100% safe and effective medical treatments, so we can all sleep easy tonight as we wait for the next booster drive and medical compliance passports that they hope to force on us. Where?